We really need your help. We need the arrow. I want to know everything about this green arrow, where he lives and who he loves. Feels like old time. Embrace your inner darkness. Bullet for me. Hey YouTubers, it's Chonic. So another Arrow Season 4 promo that offers a better look at Damien Dark and a couple things going on with the season. And we also got some news on some of the characters. So big stuff first, let's talk about the footage. Damien Dark, it looks like he might be a metahuman. Now that's not the case in the comic books, but Arrow changes characters in subtle ways all the time. A lot of times what they'll do, if there's a character from the comics that they want to use that, that isn't like Batman or Superman or some major character and they feel like said character maybe wasn't done justice in the comic that they appeared in, then they might change it a little bit, make it a little bit better. Merlin is the best example of that. Malcolm Merlin is a huge character in the comics, but most of the stories that he appeared in in the classic comics just weren't that great. So they changed it to their version and you get the John Barrowman and Malcolm Merlin, which I think is better. Neil McDonough's Damien Dark is just going to be another shade of that. But the interesting thing is, is that it's totally possible that he, he could be a naturally occurring metahuman. They're trying to do that more and more in the Arrowverse. But look at his left hand here. He has a wedding ring on, or it looks like a wedding ring. So he could also be doing this with technology. What this is really saying is, is that he is almost indestructible. Bullets, arrows, your standard fare is not going to stop him. It's just the next step up on the villain ladder to Vandal Savage, someone who's actually immortal. If you don't remember, Ra's al Ghul during Season 3 told Oliver that Damien Dark, whenever he left the League of Assassins, took waters from the Lazarus Pit. So that's why he looks so young. But he joined the League at the same time that Ra's al Ghul did. So he's actually very, very old. The rest of the trailer is all about embracing darkness. Now that's mostly about Thea's character. She just starts to go a little bit nuts. Not like crazy nuts, but like taking crazy risks nuts. Taking big, big risks with her life. They said that's also going to be the case whenever Sarah Lance comes back, the White Canary. She's not going to be quite as nuts as Thea is, but it's like, if death can't stop me, then what's there to be afraid of? It's like the way Wolverine looks at the world. You know, he knows he's going to instantly regenerate, so he just throws himself into fights that much more. Who cares if my body gets destroyed? I'll just grow it right back. Damien Dark also name drops Green Arrow. Now, the footage from this is just from the first couple of episodes, so we might actually end up seeing Oliver take the name Green Arrow in the first episode. And look in the background of this too. Look at the Cord Industries name plastered over everything. So either Damien Dark has co-opted Cord Industries or he's just stealing stuff from him. Ted Cord, Blue Beetle from the comics, very good character. So he wouldn't be working with Hive by choice. You guys let me know though. Do you think that Damien Dark is going to be a naturally occurring metahuman? Do you think they're just changing his comic book character just to make him more threatening? Or do you think he's using technology to do this? And do you think that he's stealing from Cord Industries, stealing all these weapons? The organization that he works for is called Hive. Now, we've seen it on the Arrow before, like they've been teasing it. It's all about the mystery of Diggle's brother's death. The showrunners tease that thematically, Arrow Season 4 is all about the true meaning of family. Like, what would you do for family? What about your adopted family versus the family you're born with? You know, very common themes. There's a lot of those relationships inside Team Arrow, like Diggle and Oliver, adopted brothers. Then you have Thea, who's born to Malcolm, who she totally hates. So it's like sometimes you can't pick your family, but sometimes you do get to pick your family. Is blood thicker than water? That's why th there's a lot of rumors that Damien Dark might be Felicity's father. They might be doing the Darth Vader Princess Leia thing, which is funny just because Stephen Amell talks about Star Wars all the time. That's just idle speculation. But D Damien Dark, a lot of his qualities are similar things that you see in Felicity's character. Like they're both geniuses. And what would be better than presenting Felicity with that situation where she has to choose between the father that she didn't know that she had and the family that she's chosen for herself. Like the family that she's trying to make with Oliver, the friends that she's made inside Team Arrow, those bonds. So it's just like throwing more gasoline on that theory that Felicity's secret father is the big villain on Arrow. I think the thing you guys are really going to enjoy about Damian Dark this season is that he is openly a villain in broad daylight. Like he just, he waltzes right in and says, yeah, I'm definitely the bad guy. Your city's dying. I want to help you let it die. The fun thing about cities dying is that it actually kind of reminds me of Coast City during the reign of the Superman storyline when Cyborg Superman essentially obliterated Coast City from the map. That was actually the event in the comics that led Hal Jordan to become Parallax, and it, it set off this big zero hour arc. That, that was a long, long time ago. But we also see Amanda Waller and Oliver in the flashback, and they might be doing the flashbacks in Coast City this year. We know a little bit more about what's going on in present day than we know what's going on in the flashbacks, but I'm really happy to see Amanda Waller back. 
So really cool news. We also learned some new things about some of the Flash characters. Most importantly, I think that Wally West is not going to be Kid Flash in season one or, or right away. They said it's going to be like Roy coming on Arrow and then becoming Arsenal over a certain period of time. Look, I think Colton Haynes was on Arrow for a whole year before they even got close to Arsenal. That was Arrow season two and he, he came on kind of at the end of Arrow season one. So what's probably going to happen is, is that we'll just see Wally West for the duration of season two. And then maybe like at the very end, he'll start to become Kid Flash. We'll start to see that happen. But they did say that he would be connected to Star Labs during the season. He'd, be, he'd become part of that team at a certain point. So that remains to be seen as to how that happens. But just remember, he's not going to be Kid Flash right away when we meet him. And, and I'll, do, I'll do another Flash video in a couple of days. I just I don't want to do one right away. But we learned a few things about some of the characters. Like Patty Spivet, the Zoom character. They're changing some things about Zoom from the comics. So just stay tuned for that. Be sure to subscribe to get everything. There's also a Jessica Jones Marvel teaser. Now it really is like the soul of a teaser because there's very little footage of actual Jessica Jones in it. So I'm going to post that next. I've, do I've done a couple of Jessica Jones videos, but I'll, I'll let you guys know about that whenever I post that video. I know some of you guys have also been asking me about going on Screen Junkies. I am actually going on their show. It's like Friday the 18th, I think. It's whichever Friday that is. So it'll be like in another week or two, like right before Doctor Who airs. So while you guys wait for my Jessica Jones video, you can click here for the latest Flash trailer and you can click here to learn all about Jessica Jones. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Let's high five. I'll see you guys tonight.